Hi, you too. How you guys doing today? Um, hopefully you guys can see me enough in there, but um, I want to transplant this uh, C3 tree. I got uh, two over here. As you can see, I have to put like a camper. But you see, I got two in there, and I got one over here. So um, I'm going to do what I always do. I'm going to do my own mix. I got um, some Pimas. Let me see if you guys can see it there. I got some Pimas, I got some Putty Mix from Calux. Uh I got some Perlite, and uh, and then I got uh, a bag of compost that I have it for like, I would say like six months. I bought it, but you know, you always wanna make sure um, that it is composted. You don't wanna take the chance that it's not Compost enough and then something happened. Uh, sorry about the noises. Uh, most of my neighbors are doing some cutting around because uh, that storm we have, we left a lot of branches and damage in the neighborhood. But anyways, um, I just uh, wanted to show you guys and then I gonna do what I always do. I gonna do my mix. Uh, I, I always do one, one, and one, and then uh, this time I also um, I also gonna use some uh, organic fertilizer, soil acidifier, and my um, mycorrhizal that I always use to transplant. And the reason I gonna do some extra uh, step with uh, Citrix is because uh, you guys know that Citrix here in Florida, they uh, they struggle tremendously. So um, so I got all my things in here. So I can move my trees and everything else. I got some rainwater over there that I've been collecting to do this. But uh, this is a tree, one of them, and this is a. Uh, Dancing tangerine is a dwarf variety for Florida. And uh, you know, like it's already, the roots are too big and that container is too little. And every time that is a little wind, it blows the tree over a tilt and uh, eventually it's gonna get damaged. I just cut a little bit of the branches that they were a little damaged since I'm gonna transplant it anyway. And um, and that way, um, you know, we do the whole kind of like makeover, a little bit of pruning and uh, new container, new soil. I was telling you guys in the other video, I don't know if you can see it, but I bought this um, Home Depot and uh, there were, it, it's wood, so I flame, they say it's flame. I still came down, I painted it because um, that way it can last me a few more seasons. <coughs> Obviously, I didn't paint the inside or the border. Try to avoid a little bit of the chemicals, even though I use the safe, the safest paint, painting that you can use. But still, you never know. But uh, the Florida weather is brutal. Here in Orlando, it's cold, it's humid, it rains, it's a drought. It's like that nothing is tanned this weather. I mean, nothing lasts you. And then, unfortunately, I want to keep this fruit trees in containers. Any citrus that I put in the ground here, it, it, it goes completely south. So I'm gonna give it a try and see what happens. So um, I'm gonna show you guys um, how I'm gonna do it. And then, um, and then you guys have an idea how to do it at home. I done it like that in the past and it seems to work for me. I'm gonna lower the camera a little bit so you guys can see better. What am I gonna be doing? Let me see if I have the focus correctly. Yeah, so I do. So, um, like I always told you, I um, I always do the same thing, pretty consistent. And you see, compost. Um, if you can make your own compost, it is the best. But unfortunately, I don't have neither. It, I don't have enough time 
and like really, really a lot of space to do com a lot of compost. I, I have a lot, but not enough to uh, to help me with everything. Let me put my gloves. Because, uh, oh, I'm allergic to almost anything that is unknown to men. So, uh, but uh, just the basis. The way I like to do it, I mean, everybody's different, but if you're gonna put a fruit in container, <clears throat> if you invest your money on it, you wanna do the best you can to give it the best possible outcome with the soil and the water and everything else. This is a uh, perlite. I get this at Home Depot, I have a really decent price. In, uh, compared to the, the way things are so so expensive these days. Home uh, Depot still decent compared to everybody else. So then I put this and this and then I kind of mix that because I don't want to put too much of the other stuff without mixing because the more, the more stuff you put in there, the harder it is. And this one I don't use, not the soil. I don't use the, uh, the top soil. I don't use any of that that I get, the soil that I get in bulk sometimes. I don't use any of that. Uh, anything that is in containers, you wanna give them the best chance that you can get, especially here the way that the weather is, you really want to make sure we got the best chance. So it's been, it's been raining a lot. Maybe we can use this thing or not. You guys like my, uh, my comfort, <laughs> my whatever you want to call it. I bought that to go to the beach and then, uh, Never used it last year. I found it in the garage and I said, okay, I'm gonna give it a try. And well, <clears throat> <clears throat> I hope it's like 10 degrees less. I don't know. I already drink like, I think like 10 glasses. 10, 10 glasses of water and uh, it's like so, so hot. And, and you see this mixed from colors. It's not bad, but it's, it's like very, very sandy. He has some, I don't know. He has some wood chips, a little bit of a lie, but nothing that special. But since I'm gonna mix it with all the stuff that I got, so I'm not so worried about it. And again, I mix it again, and then uh, the last thing will be the the Pimos. And uh, I, you guys are gonna see that after I do this, I'm still gonna put a little more per line as I'm planting it. And the reason I do that is because uh, citrix like to be damp and they like the water, but they don't like wet feet though. They definitely don't like wet feet at all. So, you have to keep them hydrated, but you have to be very careful because it's not something that they enjoy that much. And then I'm gonna get my Pimas over here. And uh, this one I buy in bulk, and I mean, the last time I used it, I think I did a video on it and how I do my mixing. Because these things, unless you mix them all the time, it will last you forever. It really does. And uh, and believe it or not, if you do, you, you do your own mix, you're gonna sell yourself a lot of money. That little bag right there is nine, $9 dollars. And it's the cheapest. I could find I could find a Home Depot. 
So. This Pimax is pretty wet. Because it's been raining a lot. It was tape, but it was kind of like, it has a little holes here and there. So there we have it. We're gonna put this guy in here. And, uh, and then again. And now I just come with my hands a little bit. And I kind of have mix everything. So that way it gets ready. It's first really good. And that's what you want. You want to make sure. And I'm not going to do any amendments of the soil with uh, anything or the the stuff that I show you because I'm gonna put that in the container. So literally like I told you one one on one and then and then he should be pretty good and uh, it should help enough with drainage. Now this is my fruit tree, I already kind of measured. So I don't need a lot in, in the bottom bottle. It's gonna be more on the sides. She's not that much. She's not that much. Uh, this container is not that that much bigger than the other one. And then I'm gonna sprinkle a little bit of the soil acidifier, kind of like a like a quarter cup. Kind of like something like that. Let me move you guys this way a little bit so you can see better. So, like I said, maybe something like this, like a quarter cup of the soil acidifier in there. And then I'm gonna do uh, probably like a one. This is like one cup, one tablespoon and a half, I believe. And uh, I sprinkle that, maybe a couple of those for now. And this is some organic fertilizer for like citrix and uh, avocados and that. And then I kind of mix all that in the bottom. Because at the end of the day, most of this stuff might wash away, but you want this wood to come back to something that it has a little bit of nutrients. These things take a while to decompose because uh, it's not like chemicals, fertilizer. They're available right away. And uh, if I see a struggle sometimes, I do some emergency uh, soluble ones, but usually I try to do as much as I can organic. Uh, and then I'm just gonna take it out and see how we stand in there, if we need more soil or if I choose okay. And uh, she should come out pretty good. As you can see, the roots are not so bad. The roots are like starting to kind of like spray over. And as you can see, she already is already a little too high. So I might have to go uh, a little less, less in the bottom than what I thought. So. Put it to the side. And 
just want to leave that. So you see, I put it a little bit to the side like this and uh, try to get it in there the best I can. I'm gonna put a little bit of her light. Not a lot, but enough that she's not sitting on too much of nothing in there. I don't want it to, I don't want it to sit in nothing. Let me put my, my horizon right. And, and, and this stuff is not as expensive, but you don't wanna waste it if you don't have to. So I just wanted to make sure the dip was good before I put this. And then what I do is gonna sprinkle it all over where the roots are gonna go. And you can be generous with this. This help with crown plant shots and all that stuff. So encourage the good bacteria in the soil. And then we're gonna give it one more try. You don't want to go crazy with the roots they can be sensitive and definitely the best time to transplant a tree is later in the afternoon but unfortunately it's been raining every day and uh, my time is kind of limited so I got to do it when I can and, uh, and that's what I'm doing right now trying to gonna backfill the size you want to look at the tree and you see if you can you guys probably looking better than me but you see it's pretty straight much better container she's gonna feel much better in there and then I'm just gonna backfill on the size and uh, and water really good and uh, halfway of the filling I'm gonna add more acidifier and a little bit more of the, uh, of the, uh, a little bit more of the fertilizer. Uh, like I said, I want to make sure. And you want to be as gentle as you can. I, I mean, I see some people like they just come and chop on the tree and whatever. I mean, you do whatever you want. It's your body, it's your tree. But uh, I try to be as lovely as I can because uh, every tree you have is an investment and uh, you want to make sure you take care of that the best you can. And you see I just keep pressing down to make sure still all the way. But I'm going against the container, not against the tree. And uh, that way, she doesn't stress too much on me. And as I, as I transplant, I'm probably gonna leave them here for uh, for today until tomorrow. Because, like I said, the weather here is being ridiculous. Hot, hot, hot. Uh, I mean, I was born in Cuba, and I don't know what to tell you. Every day is worse. 
no matter how much it rains, as soon as the rain stops, uh, as soon as the rain stops, that's it. This is going all the way to like 100 degrees. I'm sorry guys about the machines and the, like I say, my neighbors are literally uh, doing all the cutting, all the trees. Yeah, I think, see, by now, I think it's enough. I don't want to put too much more because I want to be able to, I want to be able to mulch it a little bit. And uh, like I told you guys, I was collecting some spring water. And uh, I wait. Everything I give her is pretty much. And you want to make sure you water really good. Let it go down. See how fast it drains? That's what you want. You want good, good drainage. Because um, the worst thing that you can do is get one of these trees and then they don't drain good. That can be really, 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 really bad. So we're just gonna let it suck it in. And uh, like I told you guys before I pull the mush two tablespoons in a half and this is like that miracle grow little spoon uh, and then I'm gonna do the same thing with the acidifier and the acidifier takes really a lot of time uh, to work but I mean, it will be a baby level to her when she needs it. Uh, citrix like, kind of like a seeded uh, soil and uh, it helps them take uh, better the nutrients that they need. So uh, you just wanna make sure you your pH is the right pH. And uh, this is almost, the whole deal. Um, I just gonna kind of like roll that acidifier in the in the on the sides and. Uh, And it looks like it's very full, but I said a little bit, she will uh, settle down a little bit more through the months. It settles down, so you just want to make sure it's nice and uh, it's still green. I'm just coming and making sure I don't have any air pockets because air pockets are terrible. That can kill your tree very, very easily. And it looks like we are really, really good. So all I got left is, and you see I'm at the same, almost the same level that she was before. I don't wanna go over that because um, you just want to keep it the same height that you had it before. So I'm going to bring some mulch, I'm going to mulch it and uh, water again and we should be good to go. Give me just a second.
you so much for waiting for me for a few seconds or minutes. Um, and this is what I use. I use natural mosh. Uh, and uh, I don't like to use uh, anything. Like I said, I try to stay away from color mosh. Definitely no rubber mosh or anything like that. You don't want to use that kind of stuff. But you see, natural mosh uh, that you know is going to decompose and it's going to help your tree. That's what you want. So, and you want a mosh, but you want to stay away from the trunk. Never get your mosh close to the trunk because that can cause root rats. I mean, uh, not root rats. I mean, the trunk can rot very easily. So I do gonna put some mosh around, but very, very light. Nothing too close because uh, the last Thing I need is like after all this that I put some mulch and then I ruin the tree. So this is it guys. And uh that should hold her until next year around spring and uh I will feed her with uh some uh Organic fertilizer probably like three or four days as the you know just give her some time to get used to her new home and uh, I use usually uh, fish emulsion I also use um, something for the roots that um, it kind of like a, it helps the root to develop more but uh, I don't know if I'm gonna have to do it. If you saw it, she was not quite root bound. It was actually the right moment to transplant her. Uh, the roots look uh, plenty nice and healthy. So we will uh, get another stock of water and uh, I'll move on to the next tree. And uh, I got. Two more fruit trees. I want to transplant a couple of my mangoes because I still don't know where I gotta put my mangoes. So uh, I got a, a big collection of mangoes. So I am not. Um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure I got a lot of space, but um, I have to make sure it is a good space. I have to make sure that it's not, um, that it's, it doesn't get floated. I don't know if you guys saw my other videos that I uh, have uh, a big pack, part of my jar in the bag, it all gets floated. So that's what I have on my fig trees like that. I cannot do like it like a dish myself with the chavo from side to side. So that way they work around to the neighbor that has some drainage over there that they're f for, for the city. The city made it probably, I don't know how many years ago, but that way the water can flow that way. But that area right there between the fig trees and the back, it gets a lot of content of water. Anyways, guys, so thank you for watching. Uh, you should do this to your fruit trees every two, three years. Um, these ones, I just did it for the first time. I got them at the beginning of the year and I planted it on that. But uh, that was the only containers I have and I just used those. But I just got, I wanted to get a better and nicer container so that way they can have a better home and uh, survive the winter. And uh, hopefully uh, they don't get no illness. Um, she needs some probably nutrients and then the leaf miners, you see it's, it's really bad. They, uh, the other one that I have in there, they, uh, 
the sugar bullet seems to be fantastic not heard about the disease or any insects so maybe that's the one that it would be good to put in the ground as right now they're trying to work with the citrix and find a way that they can make it better or like with certain uh, nutrients to fight the uh, the greening and uh, the conquer disease or something like that uh, but until then we have to do the best we can to make them survive I mean we explode uh, to much the citrus in Florida and uh, that's what causes you know it was not natural predators for the little insects that goes from fruit trees to fruit trees and transfer the uh, the greening so keep it in containers for a little bit I mean I I know a million people that have citrus in the container and they get fruit I mean you might not get 40 50 but I mean for the family of three or four if you get 20 that should be plenty I mean at least I'm gonna be happy with whatever God gives me so thank you so much again for watching keep on planting sigue plantando and uh, please like and subscribe if you have any questions about the things that I use um, I can tell you if you ask me I mean um, any of the ingredients but i try to set down everything around so you guys can see it thank you god bless you